Infotainment Talk Radio, a podcast about vehicles. You love vehicles. We love vehicles. Let's talk. The Infotainment Talk Radio with your hosts, Doug and Joel. Infotainment Talk Radio. Oh yeah, Infotainment Talk Radio, I am Joel. Doug is out this week, uh, but it is an exciting edition. It's another one of those About Us editions, and uh, I actually have a very first in-studio guest in the Infotainment uh, Studios here. I have David Hipsch. From obdgenie.com. David, how you doing, brother? Hey, Joel. Thanks for having me. Hey, Very no excited. problem. Thanks for joining. Doug, Doug could not join us. No, that's Doug playing the drums. Hold on. Let him finish it up. Do it, Doug. Go, Dougie. Yeah, keep going, Doug. All right, that's all. No, Doug uh, is very busy. Uh, Infotainment.com has a lot of upgrades coming out for the fall, kind of like a fall harvest almost. So uh, that will be very exciting. But on this edition, we wanted to uh, talk a little bit about our sister company at Infotainment.com. It is OBDGenie.com. And David Hipsch uh, has uh, been a part of that organization for a number of years. And he's uh, fortunate, we're fortunate enough that he can come in and talk with us and share a little bit about the origin of the company, the history of the company, uh, some of the great accomplishments they've had, uh, research and development, and some of the cool stuff that's coming up in the future horizon scope. So all of that being said, let me first of all uh, welcome you with a, a, a honor, David. Not that, no, I said an honor. Hold on. Nope. Okay. Are you tired of your... Nope, not that. All right, I don't know what these buttons are, but I want to <laughs> honor you and say great job. You are our first in-studio guest in this studio. Uh, so congratulations. I feel extremely honored for that. I've listened to a number of your podcasts over the years, and you do a great job. I never thought oh, I'd uh, be worthy enough to be on here. So oh thanks, my gosh. thanks okay. for having me. Come on. Well, you, <laughs> you're an interesting guy. Uh, and when we talked about doing this uh, About Us edition for OBD Genie, I thought, wow, that's, you know, uh, the perfect guy would be Dave, you know, because you've come in. So, you, you know, to kind of cut right to it and get right to it, why don't you uh, give us a 1,000 foot view of uh, obdgenie.com, just in case people don't know? Sure. Uh, you know, give us give us a little history or give us a little flavor if you want to kind of start into the whole absolutely overview. That would be that would be interesting to know because no, it's it's, it's, it's pretty a great exciting. story. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very exciting. As a matter of fact, I think uh, what got me, I came on almost two years ago, yeah. and um, yeah. when I came on, I I dug and and dug deep and and figured out what the story was behind the curtain, so to speak, and where everything started. And for me, it became more intriguing. I kept asking questions and questions and questions and yeah. then the next thing you know uh there was an opportunity anyways with that being said i th- think where this really all starts is, uh, gosh, let's go back maybe 25 years. Um, you had uh, Tom, who was still over at NASA. That's Tom and Drunas. Yep. Um, he identified an opportunity out there and started a company called Buffalo Auto Brokers. And he went out there yep. and uh, started selling cars, um, learned the industry very quickly, became very successful. While that was going on, his uh, uh, second eldest son, Doug and Drunas, yeah. uh, was still in college. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I think he was actually still in high school. And he started helping out his dad, started learning the business, understanding what uh, car selling was. Um, Doug and Tom, over the years, as, as Buffalo Auto Brokers uh, prospered, um, identified a few things within the industry. And I think one of those that they identified was not only are people buying vehicles, but they're also upgrading their existing vehicles. And I think, that's, ah. I think that became... The, obviously the future of what is now infotainment. Oh, that's a good point. So anyways, along the way, uh, let's fast forward. Uh, Doug uh, comes out of college, out of FSU, 07, 06. Okay. Um, right. Joins his dad. Uh, all yeah. of a sudden, the downturn of the economy uh, hit, 08, 09, and 10. 
Oh, yeah, that's a good thing to talk about, and, the and, and, uh, crash when, of the economy. Yeah. Remember the whole uh, auto industry there was taking a dump there. Uh, it was. And government kind of came in and helped bail out. What was it? Ford was like the only one they didn't have to help, right? Exactly. Am I remembering that right? I think so. Yeah. Anyway, okay, yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, All right, spot on. Interrupt. Right, cool. It's your show. You can do whatever oh, you want. Okay. So so uh, what's interesting about that is, is Doug, uh, right when Tom was thinking, okay, what are we going to do next? Uh, we're not selling as many vehicles. Um, right. Doug came to the plate and said, hey, um, these radios, uh, folks are wanting to upgrade these radios. Um, and they said, interesting. Yeah. So they started gathering radios. And the next thing you Checking know. Checking them out, breaking they, them open. Exactly. They're not only selling vehicles anymore. Next thing you know, they're selling radio upgrades. That spawned, uh, yeah. I believe their company, they called it uh, uh, OEM. Uh, uh, what do they call that? Oh, OEM Auto Parts. Go. OEM Auto Parts. That's right. OEM Auto Parts then evolved. Um, shortly thereafter, infotainment spawned. Well, once they started selling radio upgrades, they realized, geez, there's all this other stuff that's going on out there. Backup cameras, trailer yeah. brake controllers, power folding mirrors, navigation, so on and so forth. So as they started to sell these hardware items to folks, what happened was people would get home and then they'd install it and they realized, wait a minute. I need to program this to my vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Or so something's wrong. Like, that's right. Why is, yeah, my so, backup camera is not working. That's yeah. right. And so the answer, uh, I believe back then was, uh, you need to go to your quote unquote uh, dealership to get that program. Well, of course we all know that that's kind of a, a myth in a way because dealerships yeah. aren't, aren't per se programmers. What they are is sellers. Right. So as people brought their vehicles to the dealership and said, Hey, I just installed this backup camera. Can you program it? Some of them looked at them a little weird and yeah. others said, well, I might be able to do it. And, and so thus spawned OBD genie. Yes, and that's a great uh, overview of it. Uh, David Hipsch in studio uh, with us here, OBD Genie About Us edition. That's what we are talking about now. And David, that's a great point uh, about kind of how the two organizations uh, really have a symbiotic kind of a relationship where, you know, infotainment uh, has some certain capabilities and OBD Genie can kind of fill the gap, uh, you know, especially when it comes to the programming. So I love how you explain that. Well, I think what they realized is, hey, we need to bring this programming in house as many after after uh, as as many OEM products that we are selling uh, to get these programmed to the vehicle. Let's make it simple. Let's bring it in house. So. Uh, I believe it was almost six years ago, they went out there and they spawned uh, OBD Genie, and OBD Genie became the software company. They became the company that actually made programmers to enable these uh, these, uh, OEM programs. um, and even like aftermarket the, uh, the OEM features, yeah, yeah. And, and and so with regards to OBD Genie, as we uh, as OBD Genie six years ago or so came out and said, hey, here's the programmers that will enable things. What they realized is not only d- did it enable OEM, but it also enabled aftermarket yeah. upgrades, right. Right. Yeah. And uh, like you were saying, they did uh, start in 2014 and pre- specifically on the Fiat Chrysler uh, type of vehicles that needed the enablement of the backup camera, uh, different features that have to be That's turned right. on uh, in the BCM you know, right. or, or awakened uh, in the vehicle. Like, hey, you have this feature now. So, you know, they've kind of really reverse engineered all of these amazing American makes and figured out here's the little key here here's what you need. And if people don't know, onboard diagnostics is what OBD stands for. In this case, uh, what is it? It's not OBT. Uh, that's Orange Blossom Trail here in Florida. It's OBD. <laughs> that's right. It's onboard diagnostics. And uh, so it goes, uh, most vehicles have them on the left-hand side of the driver's uh, side there. And it's just down from the steering column. And there's a little port there, right? And this is the OBD two port i guess is that right david that's correct okay cool so um yeah so i didn't mean to bump your flow but i want to give people a little bit of education about what what you know where that is and what it is um and uh how specifically for sure and and you you helping me by jumping in on the reason being is you and i could sit here for three hours and talk about (laughs) obd genie and infotainment all day long the the fact of the matter getting back to it the fact that Tom and Drunus and Doug and Drunus were able to kind of almost see into the future in a number of things they did. This was one of, I believe, one of the biggest 
choices they made back in the day to say, hey, you know what? Let's get into the software industry, um, the right. programming industry. Right. So, well, they saw that the vehicles were more and more going to have all these computers. Uh, that's right. Uh, you know, they already knew about all the semiconductors and all the you know things going back and forth between the electrical components. Now, obviously, more than ever. Um, so let's uh, back up 2015. OBD Genie, uh, I believe at that time, had eight programmers, and five of them were for FCA vehicles. Yeah. Uh, two of them were for Ford, and one was for GM. Yeah. Uh, and just to give you kind of some comparison, I mean, eight, and today we have... We just went over seventy five. Wow, so that's awesome. You 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 see the need for programming out there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I will say that uh, is great about Infotainment and OBG D- Genie together is they really empower the vehicle owner to get the features that are typically That's safety right. features. These are safety features. It's not like we're talking about like, hey, get me, uh, you know, somebody that cleans my car, <laughs> you yeah. know, every day. Uh, it's a safety feature that you could have if you bought it off a lot. But being able to enable a backup camera saves people's lives, saves little bicycles right. you're running into you could bump into something there's so many applications just for the rear view camera programming uh, enablement alone and and just so you know a few years ago before i came on board i had absolutely no idea really that this was a need or really was out there and then very quickly i realized oh my gosh what an incredible incredible market that's out there and i think one of the things that really excites me is is if i'm going to go and enable a safety feature on my vehicle why would I right. ever want to do it with somebody who's not a specialist in programming and software development? Right. You don't want like some Jakey, I'll hook my laptop up and turn that on. Yeah, for you. No. Yeah, Hopefully it works. That. Let's flash it and yeah, hope. Yeah. I mean, even though that, you know, you can do that kind of stuff, but you do have to know what you're doing. Uh, you really do. Uh, and, and it has to be specific. Yeah. Or you could mess something up. So as the eight programmers started to evolve, what happened was OBD Genie brought on, they realized there was a big need to bring on a software developer and somebody who could write programming, somebody who was knowledgeable in that set. And thus they found uh, who we still have with us, our lead engineer, and that's Sam Sam Rivera. Sam Rivera, great guy. And Sam, what he's done is essentially taken this little thing and uh, really kind of a Johnny Appleseed in a way, and he's just taken these seeds. And now all of a sudden we just have this incredible farm that's out there and it's full of so many beautiful uh, fruits, vegetables, trees, what have you, uh, the analogy I'll use there. Yeah, no, uh, the variety uh, of different uh, species of programmers who are talking about it like as a uh we're bill nye the science guy no uh <laughs> but uh david hips uh in studio uh, once again at obdgenie.com you're listening to infotainment talk radio we are in the midst of this about us session with obd genie and david is the gm over there and uh, the website is simply obd Genie, like uh, G N I E. G E N I E. That's right. G E N I E. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, dot C O M. <laughs> and uh, that is the website. And they call it a genie because it does kind of a magic thing. <laughs> You know, you go to a dealer, and I love that you talked about that, David, because it's true. You go to a dealer, you say, hey, can you program my vehicle for something? They look at you like you've got three eyes. That's it's right. not what they're built to do. You know, they're like Dave said, they're built to sell. <laughs> they want to buy another truck? Yeah. Oh, here's <laughs> yeah. another $80,000 truck. No, and, I just want this yeah. one to get the backup. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do all that. So, obdgenie.com, uh, great alternative. If you hear this podcast or share it with a friend or whatever, you can potentially learn about obd genie and avoid unpleasant situations and hours and hours of no progress at a dealership go to obdgenie.com get it fixed in literally minutes how how quick does the genie work David? so what, once, like let's, just use, let's just use a backup camera a rear view okay. camera for example right. once that's installed you start the vehicle as the vehicle has run for say a minute or so What would end up happening is you go ahead and insert that Genie into the OBD2 port. Um, Anywhere between 15 seconds and roughly a minute, you'll see it go to a green light. That means your program has notified the BCM Uh that, hey, there's a backup camera here. At that point, um, you can remove it. 
Um, that genie will then be dedicated to that vehicle for life. It's dedicated to that VIN for life. Uh, what we tell oh, our wow. customers is go ahead and put that in your glove box somewhere safe. Um, that'll be there as an insurance policy, so to speak, just in case somebody should flash your vehicle, for example, a dealership who doesn't know what they're doing, and then all of a well, sudden you yeah. lose that programmer. Well, they'll like do a reset, and they'll go, this vehicle did not originally have this, so that's they'll right. take it away. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Wait, this shouldn't be here. Yeah. And, and then they're leaving the dealership after an oil change and all of a sudden they put it in reverse and they don't have their backup camera you know david that's a great point we I, and we do encourage people listen stow this thing away in a safe cool place if it ever is taken away you just go get the genie will do it again because right. it is vin specific it is and another great point is for like dealers and people that have larger lots there's an awesome way that obd genie has to like put 10 tokens on one programmer so you can reuse it for 10 different vins i think you all still do that right many of our wholesalers yeah we do multiple with at the same time we also want them to be able to kind of leave the programmer with each one of their respective customers now it's one thing if somebody's doing two or three hundred of these it's another thing if somebody says hey you know what i need 10 and, and let me let, let me also make a clear by no means am i here to badmouth at all dealerships so let me just tell you this over the last year and a half we have gathered so many relationships and so many wholesalers yeah with definitely. dealerships yeah it's not about bad mouth and it's about giving people kind of an insight that you know when you go to a dealer they have no way to take the radio out of the vehicle and power it up on a bench that's correct so so, therefore, infotainment.com and OBD Genie exist because of that fact. And it's interesting because I've noticed in the short time that I've been here that there's actually been a turn of, of thinking. So, I think it has to do with a lot of the shortages, the supply chain solution issues that are out there within the world. I think they're realizing, geez, so many people now are wanting to upgrade their existing vehicle. For example, they got a 2015 F-150. Yes, they'd love to put them in a 2021 F-150, but at the same time, people are realizing, you know what, I, 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 Maybe, maybe I'm not at where I need to be financially or what have you. So they're upgrading their vehicles and we're seeing that more and more and more. And so in turn, yeah, that's a great point. Those dealerships have actually turned our way. Um, and so I remember when I first started here, I would make uh, some cold calls out to dealerships and say, Oh, by the way, David, are you OBD genie? Let me explain what I can do. And they click, you know, or some, or, or some of them who would actually listen, listen to me would say, well, you know, we only go through uh, GM, or we only right, go right. through Ford. Right. Now, all of a sudden, those same folks are actually r- 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 calling like, me hey. back, saying, hey, I need your help. <laughs> hey, remember when you said you could do something? Yeah, we need you to do it. <laughs> yeah, we need your help ASAP. So, okay, so it's let's, been good. Okay, so that was a good little kind of aside. Um, so, well, let's get back on the timeline and trajectory. Where are we at right now? So, you went 15, Sam joined. So, yeah, uh, Sam 15, joined. 16, um, as Sam came on board, all of a sudden, uh, the amount of programmers increased uh, trifold next thing you know it's 25 programmers and it's starting to support uh, many different um, you know vehicles mainly again in the big three that being Ford GM and the FCA vehicles and for those of you out there the FCA vehicles would be obviously the uh, Chrysler uh, Fiat uh, Dodge uh, Ram and Jeep yep, and yep, so yep. what was happening was as there was an increase in programmers as you can imagine then all of a sudden there was an increase in sales because people said oh my gosh now you can do this and that with an increase of sales guess what happens and you know very well Joel there is a giant need for support so at that point, uh, Doug and Tom looked within the family and said, hey, you know, we have a person right here who's a perfect resource to be able to handle support calls, to be able to go through FAQs or troubleshooting issues or whatever might be out there. And that's when they brought on um, their oldest da- uh, Tom's oldest daughter, Crystal Andrunas. Okay, okay, so they're, they're like moving 17, 18, uh, Crystal joins OBD That's right. Genie, okay, and really does help out with support and uh, all of the bureaucracy or clerical yes. kind of side of stuff, and, and events, and uh, a lot of different stuff. For does. sure, for sure, the, the, the POs, the invoices, you have to have somebody out there who's kind of an umbrella over a number of things, not just all customer purpose. service and support, but can handle... right. So then, of course, as as the years kind of started to evolve and Crystal became kind of a go-to person, uh, her and Sam really were the go-to people when it came to any sort of questions about a programmer, yeah. mm-hmm. questions about future programmers, questions about existing, etc. Um, neither one of them had much time to sell. 
And so when I came on board, one of the things, yes, um, you know, I can, you know, okay, they wanted me to manage the business and I understand that. And I have right. a, I have a history of management, but at the same time, I knew that this was a very small team. Yeah. It was evolving. It was a teeny little flower that you could tell you was needed, just going to be this big beauty one day. Yeah. Yeah. You needed to like control the environment, the climate, everything. So I jumped on immediately, just dove right in. Um, I think for the first 60 days or so, I, uh, didn't know what I was talking about, but I faked it till I could make it at least and started to learn and learn and study at night and study and study. And then all of a sudden I found out, wow, what a benefit. And I think I knew this early on, but what a benefit to these people OBD Genie can be. And so now it was kind of part of my job to get the word out. So coming on uh, to uh, about, uh, well, we're almost near uh, kind of the end of the whole About Us. Uh, David uh, just kind of shared a little bit of his coming on to OBD Genie. And I love that, David, because it is, you know, something that's a very niche niche industry. And when you come to a company like this, you have to just be so open and learn and learn and learn. And your entire career, you've got to learn and learn and mm-hmm. learn. And uh, that's what is really cool about uh, this company kind of niche industry that these guys uh, are the founders of, you know, these plug and play upgrades, everything's going to work. And, you know, um, so th- th- it's really something cool. I wanted to say, hold on, let's give ourselves a little break here. I've actually got a spot queued up. So uh, let's bust away. We'll come back and then we'll put the tail end on the OBD about us. Yeah, we got some exciting okay stuff. That? Yeah, we got okay, some exciting it, stuff to talk about. Yeah, because we yeah, because we got some cool stuff, futuristic kind of cool stuff. But for right now, listen to this. Uh, I'll be right back. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing? Working on this Jeep? Yeah, uh, hey, buddy. Yeah, man. I'm. Uh, my daughter is old enough to drive now, so what I'm doing is I'm adding this factory uh, touchscreen navigation radio and this backup camera kit so that when she's driving, it'll be as safe as possible. Oh, wait. So you're changing the radio and you're adding yeah. a backup camera? That's so right. Don't you need a dealer for all that? No, I don't. Nope. Uh, I do not. I found this website. It's called infotainment.com, and they sell factory plug-and-play radio upgrades, touchscreen navigation. Everything is pre-programmed, and it's do-it-yourself. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So what about my 15 Chevy Suburban? Yeah. My uh, son, Matt, he's actually only one year away from driving. Right. And uh, it has navigation, but I wanted to add Apple CarPlay to it. Okay. Yeah. Just go to infotainment.com, enter the year, make, and model, and you find there they have a retrofit kit that will upgrade that Suburban with more current factory gear to add that safety feature of the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto like the newer vehicles have. Exciting. I'm going to check them out today. Awesome. Don't forget, tell a friend and give the gift of safety. Infotainment.com. 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 Driving in a vehicle without a working radio can be a painful experience. That long commute is now a miserable trip. At infotainment.com, we merge nav repair services, and now you can repair, replace, as an easy-to-select-and-purchase product on our website. So now, shorten the time you have to drive without a factory radio in your vehicle. Repair, replace your factory radio with nav repair services at infotainment.com. Ford, GM, Chevy, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler, Ram, plug-and-play factory radio repair, replace, or upgrade. Infotainment.com, your one-stop shop for factory radio solutions. Okay, there we go. Uh, infotainment.com, uh, repair your radio, replace your radio, upgrade your radio. I am Joel with Infotainment Talk Radio. Again, Doug is out this week in studio with me. Uh, very first in studio guest, it is David Hipsch from obdgenie.com and we've been going through the history of it david you're doing well over there very well i'm just have one question for you when you can joel yeah go ahead um i mean uh, were you born with that voice or is it something that you learned along the way because it's just incredible here we go uh, i will tell you the story how i got my voice no (laughs) (laughs) come on uh no but thank you very much uh no i just it's something i love and maybe it just comes out you know and i talk about it uh talk about things because i'm not really putting on airs but I do love radio, and maybe that's where it comes from. Love but it. that's why uh, when we work here at Infotainment, you get to kind of do some of your passions if uh, they're aligned with what the company's doing, and it definitely is with the podcast. We started this show a couple years ago, um, but 
right you know about uh, that time i guess david did come on board to uh obd genie and it was great uh you know originally he's like hey a small group of people but you really did build a great team in the time that you've been here so congratulations on that and uh you know i uh anything well, of note well, the, you want to well, talk well, the about the key word yeah. you're saying there is yeah. team i mean the yeah. bottom line is it doesn't have to do with one person ever we all know that great teams it's a it's a collaborative it's yeah. an absolute team effort one of the things that crystal sam myself uh we do along with tom and doug uh is we get together a lot and we talk and we talk and we share info share info hey what's big what's what are we hearing what are we hearing from the people out there what is a program that's needed what's a function that's needed what's an added amenity that people aren't you know that we're not selling that maybe we can help people out there uh you know so and sometimes i uh know that the the feedback comes right from the customers who are like hey i want to get this feature i want to get that and we look into it and we're like oh my gosh it's possible for sure, 100%. And I think early on for me, it was an absolute crash course. But I think what, what I'm historically, what I've always done is you just gather everything, you analyze it, see what's going on, see where we have some low lying fruit. At the same time, let's see where we can build and make ourselves better. And one of the first things we realized very, very quickly was our, was our website. We needed to be able to ensure that we got that out with the proper information, the proper compatibility for every programmer and to ensure that when a customer's looking at this, yeah, that's a good point. That there's credibility out there. And so for us, we've really continued to grow our website because that's where a lot of information is coming from. For us to grow any sort of wholesale account, we're going to need some sort of go-to place. And I think our website, obdgenie.com, does a great job yeah. at that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's clear. It's concise. Uh, lots of videos. There, there are videos. Yeah, lots of instructions. Uh, I know the old nav repair site used to have some free downloads and stuff like that, but there's still information everything uh on the site is very clear and again if you do have any kind of trouble there's a little bit of support there online to help you or a chat on the website uh so it really is great you guys have come full circle uh so david uh, yeah great again you know it's exciting that you're a part of the team uh you know you've done a lot of work in the short amount of time you've been here so in saying all of that it sounds like you've trued up a lot you've laid a great foundation okay are we at the point where we talk kind of where we're currently at or where For we're sure. going or where what are, where are we well, at now? Well, what's I'm, interesting? I'm excited and, to hear what you got yeah, to say. And, and, and so, over the last year, by us kind of rounding uh, the wagons and uh, getting together and ensuring that we're sharing best practices, that we're thriving, we're growing, we ensure that there's an issue or a problem, we fix it, we move on. That's one of the biggest things we tell our customers: is look, we're here for you for the long run. We're not trying to sell you something and never talk to you again. Here's the deal: six months later, you have a question about something, call us. We're here for you. We're 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 a resource. So by doing that, over the last year, we've actually tripled our growth, which is really, really exciting. At the same time, a little scary because we realize, okay, we're going to need more resources. We need, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, over the next uh, year, really, our plan is to add another um, three to five employees, but we'll talk about that later. So currently at OBD Genie, what we realized is over the years, really over the last four and a half years, our program our genie programmers were actually built manufactured overseas so about Uh yeah so about five months ago uh we tom myself and the team we sat down and we said you know What's going on here? We could definitely see what was happening with the supply chain uh, logistic issue that's happening within the oh, world. Oh, yeah, like before, like it, yeah, a year ago, before it even oh, yeah. really got where it is. For sure. And so we started to see that there was a, uh, there could potentially be a massive, massive issue here. And so Tom, with his, you know, again, the way him and Doug kind of look at things, they see things in the future sometimes. It's kind of funny. I make a joke about that. But honest, honestly, he said, uh, hey. Like Minority Report or something? Yeah, what is right. it? Tom Cruise? He's gonna come he, and get me he, he oh, said hey out. hey sam david he said hey sam david <laughs> yeah. will you guys get out there and take a look and see what's going on with pcb board manufacturing with perfect within our area yeah so what we did is we went to a number of places we took a look at what they were doing and i think what we brought back to the table was hey guys this is something we can do in-house. Um, but the problem was it was a massive, massive investment to do this. So Tom and Doug uh, sat down. They thought about it. We really looked at kind of long-term numbers, uh, you know, what was worth it for us long-term, how we were growing. And it was kind of a no-brainer, to be honest with you, Joel. 
Yeah. So uh, that, I guess, leads you to the point where you're basically saying kind of releasing here now uh, the fact that you're going to be doing what? Uh, Manufacturing? We we are two weeks away from manufacturing our first in the United States genie. Oh, that's awesome. And this, and this, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This, this not only goes for the actual PCB board itself, but this also goes for the case. So we've also brought that from overseas. Um, Every little thing is going to be made here. That's right. That's ex- every piece of that will be made here, which is really, really exciting for us. Does it, does it, does it help on cost? Absolutely. Cost, bottom line, it definitely helps. But I think more than anything for us, it came down yeah. to the consistency yeah. of control. Of control. Well said. No, that, that sounds good. Yeah, because then you could see batches and errors and 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 fix yes. little mistakes, or you know, it might even open up a whole other uh, way of existing. I know, you know, that is huge news. Um, and we kind of uh, also wanted to talk about uh, the other thing that's been that's been been worked on for a while, the gypsy. Uh, what can you talk about that? So it's it's interesting. The Gypsy uh, essentially is a genie that stays within the vehicle. The Gypsy will connect to your vehicle. Yep. You will leave it in there. Okay. And then you'll actually be able to connect that to your phone to an wow. app. And this, that, 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 what, how far away is that? Uh, not far at all. I think wow. the, the plan was by uh, Thanksgiving to have this and to really roll it out pre-Christmas. So a lot of people know that kind of like a taser type of thing right but don't you have to have a computer for a taser you do and then so this would be actually mobile phone for sure so i think what you're saying is like this would be the conduit and the mobile phone would let you download the program and then send it wirelessly into the damn that's right uh obd port yeah and then it programs the vehicle like for real like that's, that is what it does and so it's awesome because of all of Everything we're talking about. Yeah. What what Sam was able to identify about nine months ago is the fact that uh, potentially we needed a, a new board. Uh, Tom realized we needed new new some new hardware, and so the genie has had a little bit of a facelift. It's not different by any. I mean, the look when you look at it, you see the same genie, but at the same time, within the guts of it, definitely has a facelift. Definitely yeah. more cool. um, just just controllable, uh, more quality as far as we're concerned. Better LED. Lighting. I mean, there's all sorts of good little things that come along with this. Wow. And it really gives the consumer a lot of options to add products on their own with that that, that gypsy conduit. So not only are you going to be making these things here, uh, you're also kind of revolutionizing the whole idea of these one-time programmers. It's no, it's going to be more of a you know lifetime type of thing. We like right? to call is, it. That's awesome. Yeah, we like to call it giving ownership to the programming of your yeah, vehicle. Yeah, that's great. Which, which we think about it just a couple of years ago when you'd say to somebody hey did you know that you can program your vehicle or so, yeah. or, or the yeah, dealership no. cam or whoever they go huh what are you talking, are you talking? so now yeah, exactly. they're going to be in a position to where they're going out with their for let me give you an example with the daytime running lights so let's say i have that on the app it's i have it on my phone and i say what kind of mood am i in tonight i can actually change my drls i can change my interior lighting i can take a look and ensure that my vehicle's systems are running well before i go out that evening there's so many different right. options, when applications, it comes, that's right, ways, things you can do. Yeah, and that is super cool, and that is definitely the future where everything's going. Because you know, I mean, it's it's not uncommon for folks to think, "Hey, I want Apple CarPlay on my factory radio. I should be able just to download software." Well. I wish it worked like that. It doesn't all the that, right? So that's why the huge need for OBD Genie uh, and what they do. And it's obdgenie.com. And that's awesome, David. Uh, what, a, what a great uh, overview of the organization. So anything in the future uh, we're looking out for? Anything kind of in closing? Yeah, yeah. You we're, we're, bring, getting, uh, we're getting together with a couple of really You want to give out a discount code for yeah, people? Yeah, I'm no. going to soon. Are, are you no, really? I, no. I, I was thinking about it. But then um, the more I heard your voice, it kind of soothed me. So I figured let's give the uh, okay. customer. Is a special. Honestly, though, if somebody does give us a call at OBD Genie um, and say you heard the and podcast, say you heard the podcast okay. you'll give be, them something. We'll give them $30 we'll off. Do. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. So I think that I helps like coming that. into the holidays for I like sure. That. Yeah, that's cool. So All over right. this next year and okay. in conclusion. In the future, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. Besides everything we've spoke of, I think yeah. uh, we're getting together with a couple of large e commerce companies where we're really going to get our name out there. I think we're really going to see a lot of people start using uh, OBD Genie as a 
household name. Um, we're very excited about that. We're, like I said, going to add probably three to five employees. So we're really excited about expanding our team. Um, and then, and then we'd love to be able to get some sort of kind of like infotainment's doing, yeah. and that's a mobile unit, but that's oh, down the road. Okay, and partnerships. Um, you know, it looks like uh, thirty more products to be released. I think you kind of mentioned that as mm-hmm. well. So that's a lot of exciting stuff to look uh, look forward to. So congratulations on all these success. I love that everything's going to be made here in the states, and that uh, you're manufacturing everything here, and you you're selling it here and uh so it's a great company it's an american board company now everything's going to be american made uh so david thank you so much for your thank time you, Joel. is obdgenie.com go check it out and discover your vehicle's potential at infotainment.com's sister company and for Joel, right now, yeah. from obd genie we'd like to say thanks for everything you've done of course for not only infotainment but also supporting obd genie oh, it course. goes a long way so we appreciate every all no your support problem. and well, your that's time what, that's what it should be all about people helping people and And like you said earlier, we are, nobody does anything really by themselves. It's always a big team. So we keep the bigger picture in mind. We are all a big team and we're all doing great things. We thank you guys for listening to uh, Infotainment Talk Radio. We've got an exciting off-road edition coming up if we can ever get that one wrapped up. But uh, for now, I want to thank our very first in-studio guest, David Hipsch from obdgenie.com. David, thanks again, buddy. Thank you, Joel. Oh, yeah, no problem. So close out with this little spot. Uh, Take care of each other. Drive safe. Go to infotainment.com if you want to upgrade, repair, replace your radio. In 1665, following an outbreak of the bubonic plague in England, Cambridge University closed its doors, forcing Isaac Newton to return home to Woolsthorpe Manor. While sitting in the garden there one day, he saw an apple fall from a tree providing him with the inspiration to eventually formulate the laws of universal gravitation. Got some extra time on your hands? Discover your vehicle's potential. Do the research. Ask the experts. Infotainment.com is over a decade old and specializes in plug-and-play factory radio upgrades, touchscreen factory navigation radios, or retrofit kits to add more current safety features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, all while keeping the car or truck you already love. It's infotainment.com. Discover your vehicle's potential.